What's up? What's up? Welcome into an Orange Zone Overtime. I'm Tommy Sladek. This is Ashley Winskowski. We have no one on the producer mic. That's because we're in between shows here on Saturday night. That's why you're getting suit Tommy and Photog <laughs> Ashley. Photog and Ashley. this is the camera. We're only going to be having this camera if you're watching on YouTube. So bear with us there. But thank you for coming in. We are recapping a big win for Syracuse men's basketball over NC State. 77 to 65, the final score. The Orange moved to 14 and 6 overall. They are five and four in ACC play. NC State drops to thirteen and seven, five and four now as well. And this one ultimately was Syracuse's game from the jump. Yeah, it was. JJ Starling coming out with their first ten points. I wasn't worried about them from the jump in this game. They just came out with a different right. spark, a different energy, and they've been doing that all year. When they lose a game, they come out the next game with a different energy about them. Big time. And you and me were surprised to see that NC State, uh, for the gambling folks out there, was like a point and a half favorite. And you and me were like, that's that's a mismatch right there. And it's largely just because of the way we've seen this team respond. And the players almost seem to like reiterate that yeah. post game, right? Yeah, I think that they agreed. I asked some of them, you know, if, if they feel that that's true, that they come out with a little bit of a different energy and a little bit of a different after attitude after a loss and they they said yes Benny Williams said that JJ Starling I think they just especially as Moten always likes to say like to protect their home court and they didn't do that against Florida State the other day so it was good to see them do it tonight yeah it quite literally wasn't uh or you couldn't have asked for a better start for JJ than <laughs> scoring I mean the first 10 points um and then ultimately goes on to have 26 points his career high and so for a kid from Baldwinsville he's a local dude and the fan base obviously loves him and so to see him having this success he's averaging um a hair under 18 points per game the last four games and that's really him coming into his own yeah JJ was on a tirade and JJ has quickly become one of my favorite players on this team I feel like when he's feeling it he's feeling it his shots are falling but you can very quick he's very easy to read like doesn't have a good poker face sure. or a good poker game I should say when JJ's feeling it you know and when he's not you also know Big time. And one of the guys that was, I wouldn't say it was his hottest night shooting. Granted, he only had three field goals. But how about that? Judah Mintz makes three baskets and finishes with 20 points. He was at the line 10 times, 20 free throws in total, made 14 of them. But it was enough, right? It was just they were checking boxes, and Judah just, you know, he contributed in his own weird way. You know what really gets me about Judah Mintz is just we've become so accustomed to him being – I didn't even know he had 20 points before you just said that. Yeah. Which is like <laughs> we just expect know. it. Like he's averaging – whatever, he's averaging like 19 a game or something. But it's just not even the story when Judah Mintz has 20 points a game because we just expect that from him. So I didn't even know that. But he played really well. Um, had some important assists again tonight too, which his Big floor time. game has been really awesome the last few games. And those are the days in the games – we won from Judah, right? Yeah. When the other day when he had 26 or 28 points, but no one else was going, that's not really what you want. I no. think getting Judah to 20, awesome, great. You want that, but it's when he's able to, you know, really run the offense and get the guys that have the hot hand, get them the ball and allow them the ability to score. And outside of the offense, I think we really have to give credit to the defense in yep. that first half especially yep. to allow just 22 points that was a, a UVA style first half defensively and they really just didn't allow them to do anything I think it was a little bit surprising to see DJ Burns the big dude down low for yep. NC State not start but then credit to Peter Carey I was mean, a nuisance to him I know uh, they were talking about that post game. Autry, well, first of all, the first thing Autry said in the post game press conference was that was our best defense all year in yeah. the first half specifically, which I think was obvious. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the post game locker room was really fun. Quadier was like making fun of a bunch of reporters were gathered around Peter Carey. And, you know, Peter Carey doesn't usually get a whole lot of reporters' sure. attention. Uh, and Quadier was making fun of him. He's like, big guy, Pete. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Pete held his own. He, he more than held his own. And I think that was a big difference tonight. Yeah, it was a team effort for sure, and you know Malik Brown did his thing. Benny Williams, nice game for Benny. He yep. had a, you know, I think a more quiet eleven points, and then Bell's first half was really his his moment, his time. He had he got hot from three, and uh, you know credit to the to the broadcast team with West Durham and those guys because they knew like us that. If his threes are falling early, yep. it's a good sign for just not just him, but the Syracuse team in general. And he had a, a few big threes and then a windmill, earned himself a T. <laughs> uh, and it was chippy from what you said. A chippy Ashley game. Ashley was baseline 
Almost got crushed by an NC State player at one point, but survived. Oh, I did. I did survive. I had yeah. my first tackle by a player, <laughs> which is like a photog rite right of passage. Exactly. So, you know, I survived. Um, yeah, a little chippy, a little chippy game. That's how I would describe it. I felt like, yeah, Chris Bell got that technical, and he said post game that that was because he, like, whatever, motioned towards the bench after, um, kind of saw Autry give many or full, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, after that occurred. Oh, yeah. But even Judah, I felt like, was kind of, I saw um, Brent Axe tweet it, like, anything you can do, I can do better. That's how they were playing. Like, Judah was kind of laughing at him. It was a little, it's chippy, but it was fun. Big time. And this team, also, they do well when, the Syracuse when Otto's army has the student the yes. the blizzard yep. happening. I specifically think of that win over Wake Forest a few years ago. That was just an amazing day, I think, for Cole Swider and Buddy Bayheim. But more importantly, when there are big players being honored and coming back to the yeah. dome, Syracuse does well. And Dave Bing was a guy being honored at halftime. Eighth legend going into the ring of honor. So he was here back in the sixties, Jim Bayheim's roommate. Goes on to be an All-American. Bayheim credits him for kind of the surgence of this program. He ends up being a seven-time All-Star. Um, what did he have to say? Because he's a guy that ended up being the mayor of Detroit at one point. But for him to come back in kind of all these years, get that name recognition. Yeah, it's interesting to hear him uh, credit Syracuse not only with you know a lot of the success he had in basketball, but a lot of the success he had in life. He Love always that. likes to talk about Syracuse University as just more of a – complete thing for him rather than just a, a stop along the way for basketball so it was great to hear him talk at halftime and Adrian Autry said that he visited with the team this week in practice and um, he got to really spend some time with them and encourage them and one of the big things that he um, preaches in terms of the team is like chemistry and right. all being friends on and off the court um, and he said that's what Syracuse had going back in the 60s when he was here and I think that's something this team this year has as well yeah do they make a mention of that post game the players yeah um, I didn't get to talk to them specifically about with Dave Bing, but the player well, not Dave Bing more so like them being the friend, the, the yes. chemistry. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's something I wanted to touch on. Cause I feel like you and I have noticed that. I feel like a lot of people have noticed that, that this team seems to be pl uh, friends off the field as well. Um, and they are, they're close. I asked Benny and he, we can pop up the soundbite, but he basically said, yeah, like we all love each other. We all fight for each other. And I, I think that's a really big catalyst for why they come out and they have these big wins after a big loss. They pick each other up and you can see that in moments on the court as well. Big time. And fans can see that too. And this is one of those where, where it feels genuine. And, and if someone's getting an earful by all trigger, one of the coaches, it's the players that are immediately there to, yep. to console them and kind of be that, um, you know, the, the, just the someone someone to push them and yeah it's a good energy around this team but what they need is that good energy to carry over through a stretch of games so boston college tuesday took down the eagles earlier this month and new massachusetts um should be a good game should be a good game and i think hopefully should be a win for this team too hopefully and you know i was thinking about moton's prediction tonight or not prediction but his thing he said this homestand he wanted yes. to see them go three for three and they'd be like in a much better tournament position if they did they went two for three mm -hmm. so i mean could have been worse but yeah um because some questions about march started to come up tonight in the locker room so and of course they brushed them off but we'll see we'll see what happens that's that time i mean boston college and they have wake forest and then Louisville, so another opportunity to get some wins, and if they go three and zero on this stretch, I mean, end of the day, seventeen and six, that sounds pretty nice. Fourteen and six sounds good compared to the last few years for where we normally are in this situation. So, hey, yeah. Ashley Winskowski, Tommy Slater, thanks for joining us for this overtime. Um, we'll be back on. Wednesday, I think this week, we want to do a delay. We normally have it come out early Wednesday morning, but with the SU men playing Tuesday night, we'll try to bring you something on Wednesday. And then, of course, the SU women have a huge game Sunday against Virginia Tech. We'll look to bring you some content on that as well. See ya. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye. We're out.